Hello everyone, me again. Uh, I thought I'd take a break from just the usual installing Ubuntu and wiping my system out and talk about some different things today. Uh, so as you may be aware, on Ubuntu we ship with support for snaps and it's one of the ways that you can get applications on your system. And I'm showing you here the main screen of uh, the Ubuntu software store. Uh, so if you do a search and look for Ubuntu software, you'll see it listed there. Uh, this is a uh, based on GNOME software, GNOME software, um, with an added plugin to enable it to access the Snap Store. Uh, and we try and fill the uh, categories in here with interesting stuff that people might want to install. So, you know, for example, Android Studio is a super popular application and Critter as well. And uh, uh, Mindustry is a, is a cool game and Discord is a popular chat thing. So we try and put stuff in here that people will want uh, because, you know, it's all about the apps. When people install uh, an operating system, they want to be sure that there's apps there. Um, and this is cool and you can search for stuff. Um, there's a little demo app that I use a lot, which is called Emoji. Well, it's actually called Emoj, uh, and if you do a search for that, you know it's the right one because it's got this highly amusing icon. Um, and uh, you can install applications through here. I'll just uh, put in my password uh, and read the reviews and see who published it and all that kind of good stuff and see what license it's under and and all of that in here. Um, but a lot of people prefer to use this. Uh, the snap store from the command line and so I wanted to show how you can uh, manage snaps on the command line plus a few extra uh, tips and tricks for using snaps on the command line because there's some stuff that I think a lot of people aren't aware of uh, so if I do uh, snap info the main command is snap and if I do snap info image uh, you'll see information about the snap that I just installed and you can see down here it says installed version 2 and uh, you can see the refresh date was today so just now I installed this snap from the store and I can run it it's just a little um, a little thing that lets you search for emoji on the command line so if I do emoji horse it uh, tries to figure out what the most appropriate uh, emoji for me is um, and displays them so it's a very basic application I use this just for testing stuff it's written in node.js I think so it's easy enough to install and remove snaps. If I do snap uh, remove, uh, actually I'll prefix that sudo, sudo snap remove emoji. I can remove the snap from my system. Now, what you might not be aware is that the data that that snap had, albeit not very much, uh, there's an automatic snapshot when you remove the snap. And you can see those if you run snap saved and snap saved shows you a list of all of the snapshots of all of the applications data that you have removed and how old they are so you can see at the bottom 17 seconds ago i removed emoji and it saved a very small amount of data but some of the snaps like open spades is a has got a larger set of data and so when i removed open spades that was snapshotted of days ago and you can uh, manage these there's commands like snap um, I think it's snap forget uh, so if I snap forget 7 there we go snapshot 7 is forgotten and now if I do snap save that one's gone away and I've got my disk space back but you don't actually need to worry too much about your disk space because it only keeps them 30 days anyway and then they they roll off the top but it's quite handy because if you realize you've you know removed your web browser and therefore you've removed all your bookmarks and everything that were in there you might think oh no uh, how do i get those back well you can just snap restore and then the number now that i've restored the data for that application i can either go and look in um the directory where that application stores its data which might be there and it might be in bar uh, emoji uh, bar snap 
emerge. Depends on the application, but those are the kind of places they'll be. I could just go and look at the files manually, or I could reinstall the application. And the application should carry on as if that application data was always there by me restoring it. So uh, if I look in Snap Saved again, the data is still there. It's still snapshotted, but I've restored it back to where it originally was. So that's quite a handy way to know that when you remove a snap, it doesn't remove all the data. It keeps it there for 30 days in this snapshot. However, what if you don't want to do that? Well, you can sudo snap remove emoji purge. And if you do a purge, it'll remove the snap and remove the data. So now when I do snap saved, you don't see an, initial, an, an additional snapshot after the one I did a couple of minutes ago. So that's quite handy. Uh, another thing. Uh, that is useful to know is one of the things that people complain about with snaps is it can clutter up your df output now mine's a little bit cluttered because i'm using zfs and so there's a whole bunch of extra stuff in the middle here but there's all these loopback devices for all the mount points for all the snaps that i have and the more snaps you have the worse and more cluttered this this display looks but there is a fix if you run df uh, minus x squash fs because these are all squash fs files it excludes those from the list now you don't want to type that every single time so what i would do is edit your dot bash rc file and right down the bottom you could add an alias df equals df minus x fs now the next time you start your terminal which i'm going to simulate by just running bash if i do df it doesn't show them. I can still pass parameters to it. So that cleans that up. Just add an alias and you're done. There's another command that uh, often uh, gets a bit cluttered and that's mount. And you can see mount here is cluttered up with all kinds of uh, stuff. So one of the ways we can unclutter that is with mount minus T, uh, no squash FS, and no C group. If I do that, the output is much less cluttered. I've still got all the ZFS nonsense in there, but I haven't got all the snap nonsense in there. And so again, I can um, edit my bash RC, and right down the bottom, I can put another alias. Oops. Mount equals uh, mount T nose C group. Now, the next time I launch my terminal, if I type mount, they're all gone. They're all excluded from the list. There are others you could exclude as well. Um, and if you want to still see them, still see all those mounts, you can just run uh, df without the alias, and you can run mount without the alias and still see them. So that's not a problem. So I thought that would be quite cool to show. Uh, there's a couple of others that I think we should check the documentation for. One of the things that um, snaps do is they auto refresh. So if I look at snap list, um, you can see all the snaps that I've got installed. And if I do snap uh, changes, you can see when they were last installed or removed or updated. Now these were all manually installed and removed, but sometimes you'll see a snap refresh in the list where it has gone and refreshed one of these snaps. And it does that four times a day. But you can control that. Uh, you can put the refresh on hold, you can defer it to another time. You have quite a lot of control over how often snaps refresh on your system. So there is some documentation about this. If you go to snapcraft.io slash docs, and we're going to use snap set, which enables us to set these configuration options. Um, so that's the command I'm going to use. And then the next set of documentation tells you which options you need to set. So if you just go to snapcraft.io slash docs, you'll find in this system options bit tells you how to set how to set settings. And then in this bit of the oops, uh, this bit of the documentation, managing updates, this is where it talks about how you actually control those updates. So for example, it tells you there how to do a manual refresh, which is just snap refresh. I don't know if there are any um, updates waiting. 
no there aren't so my system's all up to date um, and there's also this command snap refresh dash dash time if you do snap refresh time it shows you the time it last did an update 1239 uh, which seems wrong oh that's the last time there was a successful update there's no updates uh, right now so that's the last time it checked and the next time it will check is later on today so uh, and that shows also that it does it four times a day so between midnight and midnight four times a day uh, and it's not always the same time so it won't you know it won't happen at 6 a.m 12 lunchtime 6 p.m and midnight it's at semi-random points throughout the day because we don't want the entire world to hit the snap store at the same time and if you're a corporate environment you don't want all of your machines to be hitting your internet connection at the same time disrupting you know everyone so uh, there's a, a random element in there that that um, makes sure it does it about four times a day but not all at the same time which is quite handy now i mentioned you could control updates there's a few settings here which allow you to do that so for example this is a quite handy one look at this if i just copy and paste that into the terminal uh, you can see there it says refresh timer equals 04 until 07 and 1900 until 2210 now if i show the output of snap refresh dash time you can see because i've put 7 until 10 the next refresh is going to happen sometime around seven o'clock tonight and then the next refresh after that will be sometime between 4 a.m. and 7 a.m. So you can specify ranges of time outside you know, the, the hours that you, you're working, for example. If you don't want to have applications uh, refreshed, you can have them refresh at another time. So you control when those refreshes occur. Um, and that's just deferring them to you know, another, another point in time. But it's super flexible. You could say only refresh on certain days of the week or only on a Friday between this period of time and the goal of this is to allow you to have like super control over when updates are going to occur that's what all this is about so I've got one of my machines set to only update between 4 a.m. and 7 a.m. in the morning and so that's what it does between 4 and 7 it updates and it never updates during the day unless I forcibly type snap refresh and force it to update something. So I have control over it. Uh, it does um, also uh, have more um, detail about the time for. Ah, oh, here we go. You can specify uh, specific times. You can put refreshes on hold to a specific time. Um, and this is a little bit more uh, tricky to do because you have to specify the date in a very particular format uh, and the date format is some RFC uh, well-known well-documented date format if I do this uh, and copy that and paste it in so now when I do snap refresh time it's on hold until tomorrow at 10 past 2 but we've already said they only go out the only updates are only checked between 7 in the evening and 10 past 10 so not only is it deferred until tomorrow using this particular date format, it's also not going to happen until seven in the evening, which is quite cool. So for example, if you're heads down doing a bunch of work and uh, maybe you're sat in a, in a cafe or something, or you're at a remote location and uh, you don't want any updates to happen, you could just defer it until the next day. And by deferring it till the next day, it'll get back in schedule when the refresh time is is going to hit so this is a one-off hold uh, that won't hold for two o'clock every day that's just a one-off hold the refreshes until that time and then go back to your normal schedule which is pretty cool oh and you can also as well as snap set as i mentioned this is all documented over here as well as snap set you can also do snap get and so if i do snap get it gets the time in that crazy rfc format so you can see exactly what it is so if you want to programmatically do this you can either setting or getting the refresh time if you want to query a machine and find out when it's on hold until that kind of stuff you can do it programmatically because that is a well-known format uh what else have we got oh this is handy uh if you're on a metered connection uh you can set the system to 
put updates on hold all the time that you're on a metered connection. So this is useful if you're maybe tethered to a mobile device. You can say, put things on hold. And then maybe if you've just topped up your uh, your phone data plan, you could flick it to allow refreshing, and then you could refresh over that connection um, as and when it normally refreshes. So this is quite useful. The network manager has a setting uh, somewhere in here. If I go to um, Wi-Fi, this is my Wi-Fi. And in here, you can see it says metered connection has data limits or can incur charges. Now, if you tick that box, I'm now saying that my, my home Wi-Fi is a metered connection. And if I have this set to refresh.metered equals hold, then it will hold back updates all the while that you're on that particular connection. Obviously, I'm on my home Wi-Fi, so I don't want to have that set. So I'm going to turn that off. But that just shows how you can... Uh, if if Network Manager hasn't already figured out that it's a metered connection, you can forcibly tell Network Manager that it is. So, for example, if you have one of those 3G um, Wi-Fi dongle things uh, and you've got shared with three other people and someone's trying to watch Netflix and uh, you could put your uh, updates on hold by setting it as a metered connection and then no updates will happen you know, over that connection, which is, which is quite cool. Um, and the rest of this is more um, about how you look at the the changes, and I've I've kind of mentioned this already. So um, yeah, if I just do snap changes, you can see the list of uh, changes that have occurred, and you can actually get more detail on those if you do snap change, and then the change number that's over here on the left hand side. So 44 was where I installed Emoji. So if I do snap change 44, it tells you all the steps. And this is sometimes useful if you're installing or updating a large application and you wonder what's going on, you can do snap changes and it might, in this column here where it says status, it might say doing, in which case it's, it's mid-flight, it's in the middle of doing an update. And when it's finished, obviously it says done. And if there was a problem, it would say error. And then you can do snap change and then the number and see at what step it failed. So it could be that it... I don't know, ran out of disk space or your connection was interrupted or something. And you'd get that from uh, whatever step in here that had failed. So it's quite a nice way to um, uh, look back over the most recent updates on your system. Uh, I think that's all of the useful things in there, really. Uh, yeah, the most useful things, I think, are um, those two... Uh, those two things at the bottom of the uh, bash RC, those are super useful. But being able to put your uh, updates on hold is something I know uh, a lot of people would rather be able to do with snaps and not have it update while they're working. There is also a further option, uh, which I think we blogged about recently, uh, which allows you to prevent updates while there we go this blog post here allows you to prevent updates while an application is running so for example if you're in android studio if you had installed android studio from the snap and you're in the middle of doing some development you don't want your ide to update while you're currently using it and so we've got this new experimental feature which hopefully will land soon and it if you set this it will prevent uh, an application being refreshed while it's currently running, which is super useful for those occasions where you want to be totally in control. And so it's a it's an experimental feature. Uh, I recommend reading this blog post. It's at the top of the list on snapcraft.io slash blog. But if you set that, then at the point when you come to try and refresh, or if something is refreshing in the background, it actually will be suppressed. It won't let the, the snap uh, refresh at all until you close the application. So it could be when you shut down your computer, the next time you start up, before you open that particular application, it'll get a refresh in the background. Or maybe if you just close the application, then a bit later on it will refresh, or you could manually refresh it with Snap Refresh. So that's another way we're making sure that you can stay in control. Um, as always, if you get any questions about uh, Snapcraft related stuff, uh, there's a forum. Uh, which is forum.snapcraft.io and uh, there's a whole bunch of friendly people there providing support 
Uh, but I thought that would be uh, an interesting diversion from our regularly scheduled program of testing Ubuntu. Uh, if you have any comments, leave them below. Uh, feel free to subscribe and share this with your friends. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one of these.